10 systems relaxation meditation please lie down in shavasan relax your whole body tell yourself i am going to practice 10 systems relaxation meditation i am not going to sleep this meditation involves the art of listening and creative visualization to completely relax all the systems in the body. Scan your body for any tightness or stiffness. Relax your whole body. Surrender to Mother Earth. Relax your feet ankles, calf muscles, shins, knees, thighs, pelvic area, abdominal cavity, thoracic area. Relax the whole back, neck, back of the head, top of the head, facial muscles, eyes, and the ears. Relax the whole body. Let us begin the 10 systems relaxation meditation. Anatomy is the scientific study of the body structure, while physiology is the study of the functioning of the body. Your body is made up of different systems. Let us see the systems one by one. The first system is integumentary system. This system includes the hair, nails and the skin. Become aware of it. The system acts as a barrier between the interior of the body and the outside world. It protects the body from damage and intrusion by microorganisms keeps the fluids and helps maintain body temperature attitude of gratitude to your hair nails and the skin the next system is the muscular system become aware of the muscular system Muscular system is a system that provides motor power for all movements of your body parts. Some muscles work without your intervention like your heart, while other muscles are controlled by your thoughts and allow you to do stuff and move around. There are over 650 muscles in the human body. They are under your skin and cover your bones. Muscles work by expanding and contracting. Many of your muscles come in pairs. An example of this are the biceps and the triceps in your arms. When the biceps contract, the triceps relax. This allows you to bend your arm. When you want to straighten, your arm, the biceps relax and the triceps contract. A large share of the body's energy is used by the muscular system. There are three types of muscles, skeletal muscles, smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. Repeat in your mind skeletal muscles, smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. Skeletal muscles form most of your body weight and are under your control and hence called as voluntary muscles. They are called skeletal muscles because they are almost always found attached to the skeleton and produce movements in different parts of the skeleton. 
skeletal muscles stabilize your skeleton and give you a proper posture attitude of gratitude to your skeletal muscles let us now become aware of smooth muscles smooth muscles form the soft body of organs like stomach intestine blood vessels etc they are not under your control and are responsible for body activities like digestion of food etc they are thus called as involuntary muscles attitude of gratitude to your smooth muscles become aware of the cardiac muscles cardiac muscles are exclusively found in your heart they are extremely strong and powerful muscles they too are involuntary muscles attitude of gratitude to your cardiac muscles it takes 17 muscles to smile and 43 muscles to frown all the more reason to smile instead of frown gently smile and express attitude of gratitude towards your muscular system the next system is the skeletal system the skeleton can be defined as the hard framework of your body around which your entire body is built it forms around 18% of your total weight the skeletal system is comprised of a system of 206 bones cartilage tendons ligaments and joints some bones have a protective role for the internal organs others provide a framework for the body some bones contain red marrow that produce blood cells and some contain yellow marrow that stores fat attitude of gratitude towards all these 206 bones cartilage is softer than bones and somewhat flexible like rubber cartilage connects for example the ribs to the sternum allowing the ribs to move as you breathe cartilage supports your nose and outer ears joints contain some cartilage most of an infant skeleton consists of cartilage which is gradually replaced by bones the bones of the human skeleton are divided into two groups axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton axial skeleton consists of the skull vertebral column and the thoracic cage repeat in your mind axial skeleton consists of the skull vertebral column and thoracic cage the appendicular skeleton consists of the shoulder girdle the upper limbs pelvic girdle and the lower limbs the thoracic and sacral curves are termed as primary curves because they are present in the fetus the cervical and lumbar curves are secondary curves and are developed after birth attitude of gratitude towards axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton p 
be aware that you have to stay awake relaxing each and every part of the body relaxing each and every system then tommy of the spine is dividing up the spine into three major sections the cervical thoracic and lumbar there are seven cervical vertebrae two valve thoracic vertebrae and five lumbar vertebrae below the lumbar spine is a bone called the sacrum which is part of the pelvis the spinal canal is a large hole in the center of the vertebrae through which the spinal nerves pass the vertebrae are separated by intervertebral disc which acts as cushions between the bones each disc is made up of two parts the hard tough outer layer called the annulus surrounds a mushy moist center called the nucleus the c shaped curves of the neck that is cervical spine and lower back that is lumbar spine are called lordotic curve the reverse c shaped curve of the chest that is the thoracic spine is called kyphotic curve become aware of these three curves attitude of gratitude to your skeletal system the next system is the nervous system the nervous system is made up of the brain the spinal cord and a large network of nerves that covers all parts of the body together the nervous system helps different parts of your body communicate and allows your brain to control what is going on let's now relax the nervous system the nervous system is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord the peripheral nervous system has the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system in turn has the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division the sympathetic system is associated with the fight or flight response and the parasympathetic activity is referred to as rest and digest homeostasis is the balance between the two systems the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division focuses on the heart lungs and the pancreas attitude of gratitude to your nervous system let there be balance the next system is the respiratory system become aware of your chest region you breathe through your respiratory system this system is made up primarily of your lungs and windpipe through respiration you exchange gases with your environment your cells require a continuous supply of oxygen in order to obtain energy from food molecules your nose does more for breathing than just providing a place for air to enter your body become aware of your nose your nostrils it helps to filter the air of dust and other stuff it does this by using hair and mucus it also helps warm up the air prior to getting into the lungs 
you breathe in using a muscle called the diaphragm the diaphragm flattens out making your lungs expand and fill with air when you breathe in air gets forced through the nose or mouth down your windpipe and into bronchi tubes into your lungs these bronchi tubes branch out and get smaller and smaller like the roots or branches of a tree at the end of the smallest branch of the bronchi are tiny air sac called alveoli these air sacs have very thin wall that allows oxygen to be passed to red blood cells as they are passing by there are hundreds of millions of these tiny sacs in your lungs many of these alveoli don't open in your lifetime because of faulty breathing the alveoli don't just pass oxygen to your blood they also help to clean out waste gas from your blood cells these waste gas is carbon dioxide when you need to breathe the carbon dioxide out of your lungs the diaphragm bows up and pushes the air back out getting rid of the carbon dioxide this makes room for fresh air with new oxygen to come back in with your next breath become aware as you inhale air passes in through nostril to the nasal cavity pharynx larynx trachea bronchus bronchiole alveolus as you exhale air moves out via alveolus to bronchial to bronchus to trachea to larynx pharynx nasal cavity nostrils and out attitude of gratitude to your respiratory system in the next system is the cardiovascular system the term cardiovascular is a combination of two words cardio and vascular cardio is derived from cardiac meaning heart and vascular means blood vessels cardiovascular system is also known as circulatory system the circulatory system transports respiratory gases nutrient molecules waste and hormones throughout the body these materials are carried out by an intricate network of blood cells which follow continuous circuits from the heart through arteries capillaries and veins back to the heart the circulatory system also regulates your body temperature become aware of the heart the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava gets impure unoxygenated blood to the right atrium of the heart This is the upper chamber of the heart. The tricuspid valve opens and all the blood slowly moves to the right ventricle which is the lower chamber. Then the pulmonary valve opens and via the pulmonary artery the blood goes to the lungs. The blood here passes through capillaries adjacent to the alveoli and becomes oxygenated. the pulmonary vein then gets the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium which is the left chamber of the heart the mitral wall opens and the blood is transferred to the left ventricle and then through the aortic wall the blood goes to the aorta to circulate through the whole body to rejuvenate it become aware of the heart beats 
attitude of gratitude to the circulatory system. The next system is the digestive system. Every cell in your body does work and this requires energy which is supplied by the food you eat. However, in order to use food, you must first break it down into substances that the various organs and cells in your body can use. This is the job of your digestive system. The digestive system acts in stages to digest your food. Each stage is important and prepares the food for the next stage. The entire length of your digestive system is around 20 to 30 feet. Become aware of the major stages of the digestive system. Chewing is the first stage of the digestive system. When you chew your food, it breaks down big pieces into small little pieces that are easier to digest and swallow. Also, your saliva is more than just water. It has special enzymes in it that start to break down starchy food while you chew. Swallowing may seem like a simple process to us, but food doesn't just fall down your throat into your stomach. First, your tongue helps to push food into the back of your throat. Then, there are special throat muscles that force the food down into a long tube called the esophagus that leads to your stomach. Muscles push the food along until it gets to your stomach. At the same time all this is going on, a flap blocks off your windpipe making sure food doesn't go the wrong way and make a choke. This flap is called the epiglottis and fortunately for us it works automatically. The next stage is the stomach. Food stays in the stomach for around 4 hours. While the food sits there, more enzymes go to work on it, breaking down things like proteins that your body can use. The stomach kills a lot of bad bacteria as well. The small intestine. The liver and the pancreas do a lot to help the digestive system along. Both work with the small intestine. The liver provides bile that is stored in the gallbladder that helps break up fat into smaller bits. The pancreas provides additional enzymes to help digest all sorts of food. The liver also processes the digested food from your blood before it gets sent to various places in your body to be used. The first part of the small intestine works with juices from the liver and the pancreas to continue to break down your food. The second part is where the food gets absorbed from the intestine and into your body through the blood. The last stage is the large intestine. Any food that the body doesn't need or can't be used is sent to the large intestine and later leaves the body as waste. Let us now relax the digestive system. Relax the liver on the right, gallbladder on the right. Relax the stomach in the center, spleen on the left, pancreas on the left, small intestine in the center, appendix on the right, large intestine, rectum, relax the anus, attitude of gratitude to the digestive system. The next system is the urinary system. The organs of the urinary system include the kidneys, 
renal pelvis, ureters, bladder and urethra. The urinary system's function is to filter blood and create urine as a waste byproduct. After the body has taken the food that it needs, waste products are left behind in the bowel and the blood. Kidneys are a pair of purplish brown organs located below the ribs towards the middle of the back. Their function is to remove waste products, balance the body's fluids, release hormones to regulate blood pressure, control production of red blood cells. Two ureters, which are narrow tubes, carry urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder. Muscles in the ureter walls continually tighten and relax forcing urine downward away from the kidneys. If urine backs up or is allowed to stand still, a kidney infection can develop. About every 10 to 15 seconds, small amounts of urine are emptied into the bladder from the ureters. Bladder, this triangle-shaped hollow organ, is located in the lower abdomen. It is held in place by ligaments that are attached to other organs and the pelvic bones. The bladder's walls relax and expand to store urine and contract and flatten to empty urine through the urethra. A healthy adult bladder can store up to two cups of urine for two to five hours. Two sphincter muscles are circular muscles that help keep urine from leaking by closing tightly like a rubber band around the opening of the bladder. The nerves in the bladder alert a person when it is time to urinate or empty the bladder. Urethra This tube allows urine to pass outside the body. Attitude of gratitude to the urinary system Be aware. Do not go to sleep. Relax all the system and rejuvenate it. The next system is the endocrine system. The endocrine system is made up of glands that make hormones. Hormones are the body's chemical messengers. They carry information and instructions from one set of cells to another. The endocrine system influences almost every cell, organ and function of your body. Hormones are molecules that are secreted in one part of the body and travel through the bloodstream to control what happens in another part. Endocrine glands secrete hormones directly into the bloodstream. While many parts of the body make hormones, the major glands that make up the endocrine system are the hypothalamus, pineal, pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenals, the ovaries and the testes. The pancreas is part of the endocrine system and also the digestive system. Take your whole attention to your endocrine system. 
hypothalamus, pineal and pituitary glands in the brain area, thyroid and parathyroid gland in the throat area. Think of the thymus as a cap on the heart and adrenal glands like caps on the kidneys. Relax the pancreas behind the stomach. Attitude of gratitude to the endocrine system. The next system is the lymphatic system. To remain healthy, your body must be regulated in a state of internal balance under ever-changing conditions. All the cells in your body live in an interstitial fluid which supplies them nourishment and carries away waste products. This fluid leaks out of the circulatory system. The lymphatic system provides a way to return excess fluid to the circulatory system, thus keeping fluids in balance. This fluid which is carried by the lymph vessels is called lymph. The lymphatic system also plays a role in defending the body from infection. The fluid that is picked up is taken through larger lymph vessels to lymph nodes. Lymph nodes contain lymphocytes and macrophages which attack microbes and even cancer cells that may be in the lymph. Finally, Lymph re-enters the circulatory system through the thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct which drain into veins in the shoulders. White blood cells in the lymphatic system fight diseases. Attitude of gratitude to the lymphatic system. All the organs of all the systems in the body is completely relaxed and rejuvenated. Be in this calm state of body and mind for as long as you want.